Hmm, let me see. I already did a video on a high top fade and a taper. Now I'm trying to figure out should I do a tutorial or a just regular video. Okay, I got it. Hmm, but I need to add something else to that, like follow me on Instagram or whatever. Because I know I have a lot of subscribers. But I'm trying to keep in mind to have them to follow me on Instagram and most definitely hit that subscribe button. Yeah, I got it now. Okay, yeah, I can see it right now. What it is, YouTube, your boy Black Prince the Barber up and ready to do another tutorial for you guys. In this video, I will be demonstrating on how to do a south side ramp. As you notice, I'm spinning my client in a 360 degree. Before you start any haircut, always make sure the client hair is combed or brushed. I prefer to use the comb because the comb bristles get more through the hair than the brush. So make sure your client is comfortable, seated right, and ready for their fresh haircut. First I grab my Oster Octane, slap my five off legs. Now this is actually like a ball fade, but the difference between this and a ball fade, with the ball fade you go underneath the occipital bone or over the occipital bone, depending on how the client wants their haircut. But in this particular haircut, I'm going over the apex all the way around the head. Make sure you make an even bold shape so you can know how to start your blend. Then I grabbed the number one. He said he want a wave length cut. So what you see me doing now, I'm combing my client's hair then I'm gonna cut it with the grain. In order to make this haircut look good or fine, like my other haircuts in these, my other videos, I always follow the same steps. No matter what type of haircut a person want, always remember the steps are the same, but the haircuts are different. After I make my first initial guideline with the five arc, uh, I grab my Oster arc, my Oster fast feed. Then I will go up a half of an inch. Considering the fade will be blurry, depending on how much of the blade you use to go up. Some people prefer a quarter of an inch. I always do both, depending on the haircut standards. After the first initial guideline with the blades open, you want to grab your number one, slap them on your Alster fast feeds, and open the boards up. Then you're going to go up another inch or another quarter of an inch. Like I said before, depending on the standard of the haircut, always remember, measure your cuts. It don't make sense the way I'm saying it right now, but at the end of this video, you'll understand when I'm, the meaning of measuring your cuts. You want to grab your zero guards and start to knock your little line out. I will use the corner of your clippers. Sometimes you can use the center depending on what positioning of the head you're cutting. Like it can be like some of the back or 
you know, somewhere like that, but don't use the whole blade on the side of the head because you will be pushing the guideline up. So I'm actually doing a little feather work plus adjustments of my blades and everything. As you can see that I'm adjusting my blades. See, when you adjust your blades down for it to be open, you're gonna go up on the fade. If you go halfway, you're gonna go down on the fade. Just a reminder guys, when you cutting at the apex or the top of the head, reverse your clippers because you're always cutting against the grain once you're fading. I tried this technique and it worked out very well for me. So practice actually do make perfect because you don't just only learn from your teacher, you learn from yourself. I'm not a great barber, but the cuts that I perform on my daily basis are perfectionist and everybody likes it let me refer let me rephrase that everyone loves it so practice actually do make perfect now you guys I'm about to knock the line out do a little clipper adjustment trigger play and Fade everything in real tight. Sit back, relax, watch this fade fall in place, and you will understand everything I'm doing, such as knocking the line out like I just said previously. Knock the line out, then you halfway open your clippers up and go up and knock that line on up, but don't push the guideline too far up because it's a tight blend. After the little trigger play, I grab my one blade, I close them back up because I see a little book on the top that I need to knock down. So what you guys see me now doing, I'm tightening up the blend, such as cutting and comb. I always remember to keep that comb in your hand because you might not believe it, the most important thing that I'm using, the most important tool that I'm using is the comb because if it weren't from the comb, I would never have no fresh cut. Now since I'm done with the blend and everything, I'm going back to the bottom to go ahead and knock the remaining of the hair out. So you can see that burst fade, ball fade. When he go in the sunlight, you already know he's gonna have to wear some shades with that fade because he's gonna be blinding everybody. He might go out there and cause a couple of car accidents coming from my fade. So when he get that fade, hey, don't come back to me and say, hey, Black Prince. Man, you made me have made this dude have an accident by my shiny, blurry face. Well, 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 it's time for a little detail work. Must I say a little spot mopping because I see some spots in his head that need to be cleaned up for to make that effect even pop out more. So YouTube, y'all see that? That blur from the side? That's exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of folks, it's actually detail work, but I don't know why I call it spot mopping because I'm just going back behind my work correcting myself remember to always take your time and you'll get there
after I get done with the detail work, or like I said before, spot mopping, I grab the zero guards and put place them back on the off the fast feet, open them halfway, and pretty much adjust if you if needed. I always go back and get the weight because the weight makes the blend perfect because once you knock that weight out you can see what's underneath it I always adjust your blades or adjust your guards just a reminder because if you want that blurry effect like I'm putting on my client right now follow my steps and you will know exactly how to do as I do while I'm doing my do Now it's time for a little line of work. Notice that his hairline is crooked because that's the natural growth of his hair. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to slightly, I repeat, I'm gonna have to slightly push the left side up just a little bit to match with the right side. I mean, ain't no such thing as, it is a such thing as he pushed my hairline back, but if you was, if you was born with a slightly pushed back hairline, I always store it on that particular side that is pushed back on so you can match the unpushed back side with the push back side. Let's fast forward to the Kiss Express. Now, I usually use the 60-40, consisting of 60% Kiss, 40% alcohol. But I might have to upgrade to the, I think it's 90% alcohol because it won't leave such a red residue. But the dye will also change about like five, 10 minutes after the haircut. But my boy Get Bane put me on the 60% kiss, 40% alcohol. Notice how crispy his lineup is right now. But like I said before, the dye would change black. Before he even get out the chair, the dye would be black. After I apply the Kiss Express, then I follow back with the top of hair fiber black. What I'm doing, I'm barely just spraying a little mist out over on top of the Kiss Express because I found out that the Kiss Express is actually like a sticky formula for the top of hair fiber because it sticks as soon as it touches the hair. Notice I'm underneath the line. I'm not just spraying it too heavy. I'm probably I probably be like three to four inches away from the hairline spraying. Look at that fade, man. Hey, cuz, I hope he had some shades on when I had finally got done with this cut because, hey, instead of putting the shades on his face, he should have put the shades on his fade. What I'm doing now, just doing a little straight razor cleanup, just removing the hair topic fiber along with the Kiss Express to his hairline to make sure everything is squared out because he's about to get ready to get up out of this chair and be so excited on this haircut. After I'm done with the straight razor cleanup, I grab my bronze shavers and I just barely 
get them little roach legs off top of his head. A lot of folks just say dead hair. Like I said before, hey, I just make up stuff. So I'm actually getting the roach legs off his hair so everything can lay down perfectly. You too, this is the cut. And if you like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Instagram at black underscore prince 79. It's your boy, Black Prince the Barber. And I'm out. May God bless. No fucking blouse up Bitch, I make it rain shower You did that They wanna know a thing about you You still that